Oof, okay. Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you are well. So I thought to myself the other day, it's been a while since I did a question and answer video, I think about a year, um, and I wanted to do one. So welcome to my living room. That is all cozy and decked out for fall because fall is my favorite season. Got my cup of coffee right here and uh, I guess we can get started. Before we do start though, I wanted to talk about two projects that I've been working on um, that I'm really excited about and I want you all to know about and love just as much as I do because I've been really excited about it. So the first one is a web series called Crash Course put on by Microsoft. Um, it's a four part series with five minute videos where we explain complex software engineering ideas, concepts, and trends using like these little toys that are all within the room. I am the host of the show, so I'm in all four episodes. Uh, it's really fun. We talk about things like GitOps and dev workflows, as well as bot frameworks and serverless architecture. A lot of these things I didn't know that much about until I went on set and I learned about it. So I really hope you check it out. It was so much fun filming in two days for Seattle with an entire crew. One of my favorite memories of the last 20 something years that I've been alive. Uh, so I really hope you like it. Link is in the description. Please check it out, it's so much fun. And I'm a host of a show. It's like I'm on TV. The second one is a more recent thing. I have a podcast. Whoop, 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 whoop. The podcast is called If Else, and we teach you and talk about how to make decisions in a technical career. So career decisions, technical decisions, the whole gamut. Um, I am really excited about it, so uh, please check it out in the description box down below. The first episode comes out today, I think. Um, so yeah, go check it out. Cool, so now for the Q&A portion of the video. Um, so I went on social media, as I do as a person in 2019, and asked questions on Instagram and Twitter. Um, just general questions about life and tech and coding and me and whatever. And a lot of you wrote in, so thank you so much to everyone who wrote in. I really appreciate your questions. So the first question comes from Instagram and it reads, what age did you start programming? And especially, how did you know that it was what you wanted to do in the future? Uh, so I started programming, probably the first time that I wrote a line of code was in high school and not because I wanted to learn programming but because I wanted to, I think like change my Zanga theme or something like that. Zanga was a blog that existed in the early-ish 2000s. Uh, so it was probably the first time that I ever looked at code. The first time that I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of what I want to do now was when I was 18 in college. So I hadn't done any coding before that. Um, and how did I know that this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life? I didn't, and I still don't know, to be completely honest with you. Uh, at the time, it was just like, it just made sense to me. Um, I really like logical problem solving, and I liked the sciences, and I wanted to go into a space where like job security was a thing, because um, I needed to be financially independent. So. That was kind of the whole reason, and I'm always thinking like, is this what I'm gonna be doing for the next 30 to 50 years? I don't know, I really don't have the answer, but I think figuring out what's right in front of you and doing that uh, is an important skill and mentality to have. I actually have a whole video about how I got into software engineering, so I'll leave it in the card right here. Or maybe it's over here, I don't know. I'll just go like this next time. I told you there's gonna be a lot of links. It's a lot of links today. Been doing a lot of stuff, but not necessarily on my channel. And I want you all to know about all the cool stuff that I've been doing because it's been so cool. So the next question and the next couple of questions are related to what is life like in Silicon Valley? Um, so first question, how expensive is it to live in the Valley? And what do Swedes waste so much money on? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I think it depends on the person and I don't think everyone wastes their money hopefully. Um, but yeah, how do I explain how expensive is it to live in the valley? I would say like rent is one indicator. I think most people in the valley are spending anywhere between $1,500 to upwards of $8,000 per month on rent. And this depends on the city that you live in and the type of house that you live in as well as roommates. Uh, most of my friends have roommates and so typically they'll pay between $1,500 and $2,500 in that range. But if you're gonna get a place for yourself, then yeah, it's definitely gonna cost at least, I would say like $4,000, even for like a one bedroom in some cities. So that's expensive. Most houses in the Bay Area are $1 million and more. 
Um, even like two bedroom, two bath, like 1500 square feet places are about that much. A cup of coffee costs about $5. I mean, yeah, it's expensive. Uh, I think it's kind of a chicken and the egg problem because software engineers and tech people get paid a lot, but also because things are expensive. Things are expensive because software engineer and, and tech people get paid a lot. I don't know what people spend their money on. I think a lot of people in the Bay Area save up to buy property and a house, um, but there's also arguments that renting is gonna be cheaper here too because houses are so expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. I would say it's very expensive to live here. So the next question is kind of related. Is a high standard of living in the Bay Area worth it? Um, I guess it depends on what you want out of living here. I think that coming here to build your network and to build your skills and uh, work at lots of companies, like it's absolutely worth it. There's a wealth of jobs and people, like there's just so many people working here in tech that it is a really great place to kind of build that and build relationships. Um, but it is really expensive to live here. And I mean, personally, I really like living in a place where there's lots of different kinds of people that can live there, like because of the high standard of living in the Bay Area. If you don't work in tech, you're gonna have a hard time. And a lot of those people leave the Bay Area and California entirely. And that really sucks. So yeah, I mean, career-wise, it's totally worth it. Pre-tech San Francisco in the Bay Area was and is still a beautiful place to live. There's lots of different kinds of people here. It's very diverse. It's really big. There's great nature. So it is a really good place to live, um, but really depends on what you're looking for. Another related question, ever thought of relocating out of the Bay Area or freelance coding? I have certainly thought about relocating out of the Bay Area. I've thought about moving home to San Diego. I've thought about finding a new city entirely. I don't know. I mean, career-wise, it just makes sense to stay here, but I would like to figure out a way to be a little bit more location flexible because the Bay Area, because I think the, I mean, economic situation is really stressful sometimes to live in. And as far as freelance coding goes, I would love to try it out. I've never done freelance coding or contracts before. Um, and I would really like to see how that goes. So that's something that I definitely still want to explore in my career. If anybody has resources or you do it yourself, let me know in the comments down below any advice or resources or videos or something that you think would be really helpful. Okay, I need a quick coffee break. <sighs> Nothing like a good cup of coffee. Next question is from Twitter. Do you ever feel like you don't wanna work as an iOS developer anymore and try out something else? Yeah, <laughs> I have that. Like, I think about that weekly, I think, about what would I do if I wasn't an iOS developer. I recently came to the realization that iOS development is very niche and not everyone needs an app. So I've been thinking about that a lot. I've also been thinking about if I wasn't a software developer, what would I be doing? I think YouTube is really fun and I would love to explore that a little further because it's way more creative than software engineering and I'm making videos for me and myself and what I think is important versus what a company and other people think are important. So the flexibility and freedom, I guess, that that gives is really cool and awesome and you get to meet really cool people in the process. But yeah, I mean, I think about it all the time and I, I don't know if it's just that the circumstances haven't arisen or I haven't figured out the right reasons or there haven't been enough reasons to actually make a change, but I feel like in the next five years, something will change. So we'll see. Now for something completely different. When did you start getting into the guitar and singing? Uh, I started playing guitar in middle school, I wanna say. My dad bought a classical guitar for himself and then I started learning chords on it. Singing I've been doing all my life, but I've been taking it way more seriously recently because I recently started singing classes. Sometimes I post videos of myself singing on Instagram, so go check that out. Every once in a while it'll be there. I really like it. It's just such a different way of expressing yourself and music gives me a lot of energy. Listening to it, being in music, just making it. So it's a very important part of my life and I'm trying to make it more of a bigger thing. I really like this question because I've definitely felt this way before. Um, it reads, I feel burned out from drowning in the highly meta, opinionated, and pseudo-intellectual atmosphere of conversations in tech. It feels soulless often. What are your thoughts on this? 
Ooh, man, this is a very familiar feeling to me because I, th I think about this a lot, especially uh, like when I was in my early career, I was kind of like, how do I fit into this industry when everyone has an opinion about everything? Honestly, it's kind of my biggest like uh, gripe about the industry and the thing that I struggle with the most. When I feel this way, I have to remember that tech at the end of the day does sometimes just feel like websites and code and apps and stuff and just like the product that gets made but really it's about all of the people who pour in so much of their thought and love into products and the people who get to consume it and use it to hopefully make their life better um i try to kind of see the nuance in it all in that everyone's just trying their best everyone's trying to get from one place to another uh i also think the feeling of like the tech industry feels really meta and there's lots of opinions and stuff. Like, yeah, the way that we talk about tech is so that, and I'm not a fan of it, to be honest. Um, if you've noticed, I don't really like answer questions in like a, this is what you have to do to be a software engineer, or this is the right and only way to do stuff because I don't want to prescribe that to anybody. Everyone has different paths in tech. There's no one right way. I think there are lots of ways to get into it that I can help guide you and show you, but there's no right or wrong way to be in tech or to live or to have an opinion about. So I don't think that it's productive or helpful to shame anybody or to perpetuate or to hype something up for that reason. I think it's okay to be excited about tech. I think it's okay to share that excitement with others and talk about what you've been looking into. But I, I think it's, it's real that the impact that that has on some people is that it feels empty and weird and not the right thing. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you ever find yourself in this situation, find other people who feel that same way about tech and then just have a conversation about it. Um, either about the fact that the tech industry feel this way or sometimes I'll just like talk about feelings with somebody who also works in tech, but then it makes me realize like, oh, there are people here who like really care and who are really human just in the same way that I am. Um, that makes it feel a little less scary and empty. That is me on my soapbox, <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah, it's a hard question, I think. It does feel soulless. And sometimes I'm like, why, all, why do all these companies exist? But like, there's a lot of things that I don't know about the industry and there's a lot of problems that people face that I don't know about either. And I think acknowledging that you don't know helps kind of free yourself from that stress and from that pressure almost to know. Like you don't have to know everything, you do you. Like you only know so much and there's only so much time in your life and in your day to do it. And if you are making sure that you're spending your energy in the right places and the right ways that feel right to you, like that's all that matters. And then finding other people who align with you in that same way, um, I think really, really helps. So the next question is around career changes and boot camps, and so I'm gonna call in two people who are very close to me who have experience in this. Welcome to the set. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Scott, this is my husband, he's also a software engineer, and this is Ray, this is my little brother. Um, you just graduated from boot camp. Yeah, I just graduated from UX design boot camp. Yeah, so these two have real experience doing kind of a career change and thinking about boot camps and stuff. So I have some questions for you to answer. The first one, more for you, Scott. Okay. I'm a quarter of the way through my coding boot camp, and I was wondering if coding in the industry is as intense as boot camps. Uh, I think that depends. That depends on you know project life cycles, where you are. If you're an early stage startup and you're trying to build out the minimum viable product and really pushing it before you go broke next week, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's probably very intense. But then if you're at a larger company with longer schedules for projects, it could just be really relaxed and you know exploratory and you, you could have a very different experience depending on where you are. What's your experience? Because you work at a startup right now that's pretty small. Uh, it comes in waves for me. Um, definitely depends on where the product is since we're very closely knit with uh, what we're doing at the moment in terms of overall product strategy. Makes sense. Cool. Next question is for you, Ray. Cool. Uh, which is, <laughs> I think this person is considering a role in tech, but they're not sure. Okay. They write, for someone who's fresh out of school and is contemplating a career in tech, but isn't sure, how should they make that decision? Which is you, because you just graduated from college. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you decided to go into a coding bootcamp. Yeah. 
So I think the most important thing is research, research, research. Um, I think it's important to sort of maybe like rent out some books that might be informative um, and then sort of read those through. And then if it sort of clicks with you and you find that stuff interesting, then I would definitely recommend that. I'd also just sort of, there's always going to be like a leap of faith sort of element to it as well. No one's going to be 100% sure until you're deeply in it. Um, I know some boot camps offer like a one day sort of course or a one week sort of course. So there are options to sort of dip your feet in a little bit um, before you jump in, yeah. cannonball into it. You never know until you try. You never know until you try. <laughs> Thank you too for popping in and answering these questions for me. If you want more videos with either or both of them in them, let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you want to see more of them, I stream with Scott on Twitch sometimes and we play games together and we make fun of each other and it's a fun time, so that's in the description box down below, but as well as their Instagrams if you want to follow them. They're kind of interesting, I guess. What? <laughs> <laughs> One question that I got, which I've gotten throughout the last couple of months that I just want to clear up. Someone asked, am I still actively coding in my job? Which, yes. I think uh, my I left my job video from a year ago was a little bit misleading or maybe people didn't watch the whole video, but I just want to clear it up. I went to another software engineering job and I'm still working full time as a software engineer at a company. Uh, so yeah, I'm still actively coding. That's still my thing and I didn't leave software engineering uh, yet. <laughs> never say never. So yeah, I'm, I'm still working. I'm still coding and stuff, you know, going to a job 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday. That's me. The most common question that I got from this whole Q and A is around how do I stay motivated as a software engineer? Um, how do I grow as a software engineer? Like when the code isn't good enough or when I'm just not that excited about the technology, what, what motivates you and how do you stay motivated? Great question, not another one of those questions that I ask myself all the dang time. For me, I'm the kind of software engineer that really likes software engineering because it's kind of a people problem. Like technology, I mean, we think about it in terms of computers and phones, but technology also means wheels and plumbing and modern day refrigeration, like all of that kind of stuff too. But they're all there to help make life more convenient and accessible and, easy to live for people and reduce death and whatever. I, I really like software engineering in that way of like, it helps people to do things that they couldn't do before, it advances society. And so when I kind of get lost in the details and lose my sense of motivation, I kind of bring myself back up to the 30,000 foot uh, space and be like, hey, like, why am I doing this to begin with? Like, why, why did I even choose this field? Um, why, why did, why did I keep going in this field? And I remember it's because like, I, I want to work with people. I like collaborating with people. Um, I like solving problems for people. I like asking questions and finding out things and learning, which are all aspects of software engineering and other careers too. So that's what I do for myself. Um, I think, uh, I mean, one of the reasons why I started this channel to be completely honest is because there were like other people that I know in tech, whenever we talked about tech, it was always like, have you tried React? It's like the coolest thing. And like, that's the thing that you should be focusing on right now, which didn't really resonate with me. Cause I was like, cool, but like, why? Like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's cool and it is cool. It's, it's a really great technology. Thank you, Facebook. But it was never like the technology that I was like, super jazzed about. It was about what technology enables, I guess. And I think an important part of all of this is taking a step back, realizing and accepting the fact that you're demotivated and then figuring out where to go from there. If that means you have to take a week to just kind of chill and take it easy, fine, that's totally good. Like introspect, ask yourself hard questions, talk to people that you love and that you trust. Um, and try to process it because I don't know sometimes the answers come out of that that you wouldn't expect And I think it's important to address those uh, When you feel like you can so if you're in a place to do that Like I think it's a, always a really important thing to, to talk about my motivations today have changed a lot from my motivations Like a month ago even uh, definitely like years ago and I think addressing like what you want in life What's important to you in life how you want to live your life? and thinking about that in the context of like, how does this, how does coding and software engineering help that or enable that or 
provide that, um, I think are important questions. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you watched the very end. Uh, and also thank you to everyone who wrote in your questions. I'm sorry I didn't get to all of them, but I think that just tells me that I should do more of these videos because everyone has a lot of questions and are thinking and feeling lots of things. And if my voice and my videos help, then gosh darn it, I think I'm doing a good job. <laughs> all right, as always, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, smash the like button, follow me on Instagram and Twitter because I'm way more active on those because it's easier, honestly. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Remember to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Smash that like button. Smash it. Uh, the <laughs> bell. Punch it. Punch that bell button. Smash it so hard. Are we jumping okay. out? I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we we're jumping done. out. Okay. We're Three, done. two, one. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>